May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This cry is the only statement of Jesus from the cross recorded by Matthew. To be forsaken means to be abandoned, deserted, left behind, disowned. Most of us can recount episodes in our lives when we were mistaken, forsaken. Some endure the pain of being forsaken by a parent when a little child. The number of fatherless families in our dear land spring to mind. Some endure the heartbreak of being forsaken or dumped by a boyfriend or girlfriend at school, or a broken relationship later in life. Some endure being forsaken by their employer after investing many of their prime years of their lives in a company. This has especially been the case for many during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some parents are forsaken by their grown children and may spend many years, if not the rest of their lives, with little or no contact with them. Each birthday and holiday accompanied by yet another hearty dose of grief. Most of us have personally experienced the pain of being forsaken. It deeply hurts. The passing of time often does not heal it. People who have been forsaken do their best to move forward, but often have an emotional link that never goes away. And not only can each of us probably recount times in our lives when we were forsaken, we can also recount times when we have done the forsaking, when we have been the one who abandoned, deserted, left behind, disowned someone else. Most of us, in one way or another, have been on both sides of the equation. Being forsaken is not only an experience common to us, it was common to Jesus too, particularly in his darkest hour, the hour of his passion. Jesus was forsaken by everyone, even his disciples. After Jesus' betrayal and arrest, Matthew tells us, all the disciples forsook him and fled. After Jesus was arrested, he was kept up all night, tried by the high priests, sentenced to death, for the false charge of blasphemy, spat on, mocked, and handed over to Roman soldiers. He was questioned by Pilate and heard hundreds of people yell, Crucify him! Crucify him! He was beaten, flogged, forced to carry the instrument of his own death for the sight of his death. By the time Jesus cried out in dereliction, he had been hanging on the cross for hours enduring unspeakable suffering, naked, beaten, blooded, extreme fatigue and stress causing the muscles throughout his body to cramp and spasm, exposed to the elements and insects, subject to the insults of religious leaders who would not let up, hearing the sneers of passers-by as he slowly suffocated to death. Although it is mid-afternoon, darkness had covered the sky, and in this moment, the darkest moment of all time, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is the only time in the Synoptic Gospels that Jesus is recorded as addressing God as God and not Father. Jesus has even been forsaken by God. He has been abandoned, deserted, left behind, disowned, even by God. God the Father was fully able to stop, to immediately stop Jesus' horrific suffering, yet did not. When Jesus suffered on the cross, God was silent. The late biblical scholar Raymond Brown describes this in the death of the Messiah. Jesus had been abandoned by his disciples and mocked by all who have come to the cross. Darkness has covered the earth. There is nothing that shows God acting on Jesus' side. His why 
is that of someone who has plumbed the depths of the abyss and feels enveloped by the power of darkness. Jesus is not questioning the existence of God or the power of God to do something about what is happening. He is questioning the silence of the one whom he calls my God. Often when people suffer, they ask, why God? Why is this happening? Why won't you help me? Why are you silent? I've often heard that when we suffer, we shouldn't ask why, but rather what or how. What is God trying to teach me? Or how is God growing my faith? This is generally not particularly helpful or even useful. It is often an attempt to try to find something to control and understand as we suffer, because suffering robs us of our perceived ability to control and understand. Jesus did not ask what or how questions from the cross. Jesus quoted Psalm 22, deemed it appropriate to ask why, and not just in his heart, but in a loud voice for all around to hear. In her poem, Cowper's Grave, the Victorian poet Elizabeth Barrett poignantly describes this moment. Deserted, who had dreamt that when the cross in darkness rested upon the victim's hidden face, no love was manifested? What frantic hands outstretched have ere the atoning drops averted? What tears have washed them from the soul? that one should be deserted. Deserted. God would separate from his own essence, rather, and Adam's sins have swept away the righteous son and father. Yea, once Emmanuel's awful cry, his universe hath shaken. It went up single, echoless. My God, I am forsaken. Now here is the good news. For the times in our lives when we have been forsaken, God offers us comfort and empathy. God gets it. For the times when we have forsaken others, God offers mercy and forgiveness. God offers grace for all of it. For all of us, for all time, God offers us his grace and presence, especially in the midst of suffering. And while there is not always a clear answer to the why, we cry out when we suffer, there is an answer to Jesus' cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The reason God was of Jesus on the cross was because God would not forsake you or me. The Bible quotes God in both the Old and New Testaments, I will never leave you or forsake you. Even though through our sin we have forsaken God, God has never forsaken us. Even though we may have been forsaken by others, God has never forsaken us. Even though we may have forsaken others, God has never forsaken us. God loves us too much to ever forsake us, and it was out of his love for us that Jesus, God in Christ, was forsaken in our place. It was out of God's tender love for the human race that he sent our Saviour Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross. Or as the Bible tells us, God proves his love for us in that while we were still were sinners, Christ died for us. That is the good news of the Gospel. Jesus was forsaken by God in our place because God would not forsake us. Amen.